Ben Bernanke has said that he's done this because he wanted to make sure that he was protecting Main Street. And if you weren't making the wealthy much wealthier, then the people at the bottom would suffer much more. Do you agree with that? Do you agree with what he did there? You know, I think we've been asking too much to creative monetary policy. So, you know, I think we need a good Federal Reserve. And, and uh, you know, at least what the Fed did in the past five years is not to let the entire financial system, you know, uh, vanish and go bankrupt. As, as And this is what happened, you know, back in the 1930s. And right. this is what put the world in a complete chaos. So at least there's one thing that we've all learned from the 1930s is that, uh, you know, central banks uh, should make sure that, uh, you know, the financial system does not go bankrupt. But now we cannot solve every problem with a central bank. And I think the, one of the difficulties we have right now uh, in the U.S., but also in Europe, is that we're asking too much to central banks and monetary policy. And I think we need to ask more to fiscal policy. You know, of course, Fiscal policy is more complicated than, than monetary policy because, you know, with a central bank, you can print billions of dollars or euros, you know, in, in one second. So that's very easy. That's very tempting. The problem is that sometimes, you know, you don't know what you do with the money. Uh, so writing a tax code is more complicated. You get the parliament to agree. Right. You need to have a public debate. But at least, you know, if you have a progressive tax on income and wealth, you know, you have a better sense of who's paying. And right. you have a better sense of where the money is going and whether you have an equitable distribution of the burden of adjustment. Whereas, as you were saying, you know, sometimes with uh, monetary policy, in fact, those who are gaining from all this printing of money are not the people that yeah, you would like to gain. I think it was the gain. wealthiest, but I don't know what would have happened if they hadn't intervened, if we had seen a great recession, a great depression. Yeah, you know, yeah. it, it's, it, it was better to do what they did than to do nothing at all. But, you know, I think we should supplement... Uh, uh, you know, monetary policy with a more active fiscal policy. Uh, you know, if you want to balance the deficit, uh, you know, you need, uh, you need a change in fiscal policy. Well, in this country, you certainly need to ask more, you know, to these top income groups uh, who got, uh, you know, between two thirds and three quarters of aggregate uh, income growth over the past 30 years in this country. You know, again, right. at some point, you have to look at the numbers. You know, it's, it's, if it was only a few, you know, athletes or sportsmen and you know that would not matter too much but you know <clears throat> when this is getting as large as the equivalent of you know three quarters of aggregate income growth over the past 30 years you know again if the growth performance of the US economy had been exceptional you know four percent growth rate five percent growth rate then it would be okay everybody would get something but if you have a relatively mediocre growth performance you know 1.5 percent in per capita GDP and three quarters of it gets to the top you know it's not a good deal for the middle right. class right. and the rest of the population